Hello and welcome. Today what I'd like to talk about is the really simple process of diffusion. Now for most of us we learnt this in high school or in chemistry and just to run through the basic chemistry of it before we uh, before we talk about the specifics for human biology. Let's just imagine that we have a bucket of some material and just to remind you at the moment you know the simple thing we learnt at school was that this bucket would be water and we have sort of a bunch of stuff you know here we go water but do remember it could be any other substance whatsoever and uh, what we do is we toss in another molecule of some type but we toss it in down one end of the bucket what we find with diffusion is that the kinetic energy of these elements, these new elements we've poured into the bucket here, at the end of the day we'll spread them out randomly through the other so we, ended up, we end up with an even distribution within the solvent. So diffusion in a sense is making uh, an even distribution within the, uh, an even distribution of the mixture. So that's what we learn about in chemistry, but let's have a think, where does that apply in the human body and where's a good example of it? The best example of this happens that we commonly talk about is we talk about the movement of oxygen into and out of cells. So let's just draw a, a typical uh, cell with a nucleus in the middle and some cell membrane made of phospholipid around the outside. Oxygen flows around in the blood carried by red blood cells of course, but we're just going to draw oxygen molecules here. And because oxygen molecules can travel directly through the cell membrane, they don't need channels to pass through. These oxygen molecules, because of the concentration gradient, higher oxygen on the outside than on the inside of the cell, the oxygen molecules travel straight through the phospholipid bilayer into the cell. And remember, these will end up, this oxygen will end up going to the mitochondria to assist in the production of ATP. And the contralateral, uh, and, the, and the contra is true as well. In the process of producing uh, ATP, mitochondria produce CO2 and that CO2 similarly can travel directly through the cell membrane down its concentration gradient and back into initially the intercellular fluid but then finally back into the bloodstream which will then end up going back towards the lungs. Now these oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules don't need to go through any channels in the cell membrane. They directly pass through, and let's just draw a little piece of high resolution cell membrane. Remember cell membrane is made up of uh, phospholipid molecules, one end being hydrophilic, this is the philic end, and one end, these tails, being hydrophobic. Oh, uh, the tail's been hydrophobic and the head's been hydrophilic. These oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules can actually move directly between the phospholipid molecules. 